Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I'm Aaron Loomis coming to you from the Drew Estate Studio. With me today is June Lou, Seth Geis from the Villager Scar Studios, John McTavish. How you guys doing? Doing well. Good, man. I'm excited about the uh, cigar we're talking about tonight because I just saw the the character that this cigar is based off of in a portrayed in a movie recently, and it was uh, pretty entertaining. So, Fantastic. you know, I did the, I did the Leonardo DiCaprio. <gasps> That's <Yeah>. him. <laughs> what was the movie? I, can't, I cannot for the life of me think of the name. All right. So terrible we, prep. we're talking about the Protocol Bass Reeves Natural uh, Cigars of Toro 6x52. Comes out of the San Latino factory in Nicaragua. Uh, rappers Ecuadorian Sumatra, uh, Biner and both from Nicaragua, blended by Hector Alfonso. Uh, price point is $11.95, and the cigar was released in January of 2022. So, with all that out of the way, June, what was your overall experience like with this cigar? Um, I thought it was a good start uh, and a pretty average overall experience, though. Um, you know, it's a uh, First third has a very familiar kind of a, a Espinosa like, you know, uh, that pepper, that red pepper, dry red pepper that I that I dig um, always. But uh, that settles down pretty quickly. Uh, but the vast majority of cigar was very mineral forward. Um, so, um, you know, uh, in, in, in this mineral that I got, it was like a very like... <laughs> not that I fucking eat pencils, but uh, it's like this very like oh, pencil graphite. mineral graphite you know kind of a pencil lead kind of a thing going on um and i got a lot of that and i got a little too much of it uh, to the point where there's just not much else there aside from that so uh which also really made it kind of a overall experience of an average experience for me seth what were your thoughts i need to correct something in my uh overall experience final notes okay um but yeah i mean listen i i was not impressed with this cigar in any way from the how it looked to how it smoked um it just delivered this sharp mineral toasted nut dry wood spice black pepper red pepper you know medium it was just dry and unpleasant from beginning to end um it got you know worse in the final third but it just yeah it was it was tough john well, you know what I could say about the legendary Lawman Bass Reef cigar? Uh, it was very consistent, very consistently average. And uh, I think some of the notes that th- there's already been said about the dryness, there was definitely a consistent dryness through, which uh, I don't know that that really helped the profile. Um, do you mention the, the pepper up front, which I also enjoy? Uh, it's like a red pepper flake. It's, it's really nice. It's a really nice way to start the cigar. Um, but it just... The, it was pleasant. It just didn't have any dynamic character to it. So, you know, like I'm smoking it and I'm like, you know, I would smoke this. I was golfing, but like, this is not what I would expect out of sort of a premier type release. The profile and you, just. And sorry. you remember you don't golf. And it, yeah, well I do just <laughs> the golfing season is like five weeks, right? Okay. It's the same as a motorcycle season. So like. So meet Aaron. <laughs> Uh, I have golf clubs. I'm, you know, I'm Scottish heritage. <laughs> so you don't um, justify yourself to you, him, buddy. You ride your motorcycle to the golf course uh, for the five weeks where it's not raining or snowing. Um, but it, it, it's just the profile didn't really go anywhere in the first third. Um, you know, there's some pleasant, pleasant nature of, of the flavor, but just didn't come together in the last or uh, second third. Again, more of the dryness. Um, you know, there's baking spices, there's citrus. And there was some nuts and some hay and some wood, but they didn't, they just didn't combine or evolve. Um, and then the last third was kind of more wooden baking spices in the wood kind of, again, really drawing on the palate. Um, one thing we will say, as we always do about San Latano, they don't make a good cigar in terms of construction and draw. Flawless draw, flawless construction. Give those people a raise, AJ. They, they, they do good stuff. Aaron, what about you? Yeah, for me, this cigar started with creamy cedar and slightly sharp cinnamon. Uh, a toast note, note joined a little bit later, and the cinnamon morphed into black pepper. Uh, some black coffee joined a little bit later. Uh, second, third saw dry earth join in, and later some bitterness became present. Uh, final third saw the coffee depart with the toast transitioning to char, and the bitterness built up. Um, cigar had a nice start. Um, I liked the first third, uh, but dropped down in each of the following thirds as the dry earth joined in, and the profile became charred and bitter. Um I think this version of the Lawman series is kind of on par with some of the previous versions. Um, not something I really see myself coming back to. Um, 
I am curious if time would help settle down that final third with the bitterness and kind of the charred character, but um, you know, I'm sure I'll smoke another one of these down the road to see that, but um, you know, we'll see. Um, all right. Getting into the score, I was going to start at the top with June at 5.95. Uh, John was next at 5.75. I gave it a 5.65 and Seth gave it a 5.15. So June had that 5.95 matchup for you. I mean, the high, high, high score is 5.95. It's, it's not good. It's not a good way to set the bar. So, um, it, you know, protocol, and, and I'll talk about this, I, and I want to talk about this a little later after we get through the scoring, but they have so many skews, and, um, you know, this is definitely not one that you, that I would go after, and I would recommend anybody to go after. <laughs> There's, you know, they make better ones. It, it's a good price, though. I mean, it's a decent price, I guess, for a modern cigar. Yeah. Uh, pricing so all right john 5.75 yeah matches up well it's a uh, pretty average flavor profile so five five right down the middle with a uh, perfect draw and perfect construction and the movie which was unfortunately more enjoyable than the cigar is called the harder they fall on netflix check it out it's pretty entertaining all right. smoke a bass reese while you're watching the movie there you go uh, my 5.65 match as well. I mean, it was the average flavor profile, uh, went from good to subpar, so that kind of was a bit of a bummer, but uh, had a really good construction as well. Uh, just slightly wavy burn, no, no real big deal to that, but um, yeah. All right, Seth, 5.15. This is rough, man. It's, I mean, June touched on and we can just kind of morph into that. It, it's just, they, they have too many lines. They got to stop releasing a natural and a Maduro offering for things. Some, it's just stop you just kind of it just keeps getting worse and worse yeah. this was just really a rough blend with you know i don't care if you want to go after the wrapper the blend the entire thing was just was just painful um i don't know <clears throat> and these lava series are starting to all kind of taste like this like even yes. within the first one that what is what is the very first one that came out with oh, uh Sir robert peel yes because i remember when they first came out with the lawman series it was, and they wanted to make it in like, you know, basically limited uh, production or regular slash limited production. I don't, I think I don't it was exactly limited production. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and it, it was a lot of excitement, right? Because I felt, I felt like within core offerings of what protocol guys do, they're, they're good. But these Lama series, ever since the original Sir Robert Peel came out and both Maduro and Habato, like, or natural and Maduro, um, it's just been missed and they, they all taste very similar to this, right? It's, it's either really like mineral forward slash like earthiness. Um, and there's not much depth. Um, and it's very like, it's, it's, it's very unbalanced. Um, it's like a one note wonder kind of a thing. So. Yeah. yeah it's, it, I think it's tough to recommend partially because the core line for me is such a, such a strong offering. Like, you know, I can have the Themis, I can have the red label, I can have the blue label and each of those, will fit the craving that I'm in the mood for, for that profile. And it does so very, very well. Construction's great. Price is extremely good. Uh, and they come in every size I could possibly want. So like that fills the portfolio pretty well for me. And so, you know, I was kind of hoping the lawman, like, like June touched on it. The, it'd be nice if the lawman series was just one size, one wrapper um, and then just kind of focus on that because yeah, they have kind of tasted similar and, and, uh, and how do you go I'd... through their portfolio, right? Like yeah. you're at a, you're at an event and they have so many skews where like they probably catch themselves, uh, engulfing certain skews over the other, cause they're so similar. Right. And yeah. how do you even like take an elevator approach and talk about all these skews, you know, like in my opinion, I, I think because the like what I like to call the color uh, brand that the bands that protocol Ooh. guys have, um, there's there, there's such blue. good ones that they should just go back to the basics and just like push those right. Like maybe what they need to do is they need to do the Disney Vault uh, approach where they you know take some of the Vitolas away and then only bring them out at certain times of the year. Like the Disney Vault series, you know. <laughs> okay, someone's been watching Disney Vault. All right, whatever. I don't, I don't think they have the. I don't think they have that the luxury of that. I think if they did that, probably they would just lose all presence on the market. Yeah, yeah and then not. I mean, and they have so many of these like you know small shop one and dones, right? Where, I mean, gosh, that's that's a whole different realm of like 
they're going they back to out. what they're going back to what Pete did for a while when he just started doing all these limited editions or these shop exclusives. And, and that's when Pete, Pete lost me. And it didn't work for Pete. And it's mm-hmm. but fortunately for Pete, he had a solid core line. Protocol doesn't have it. And eventually it's just gonna come crashing down because people are gonna forget about all the other stuff. I mean, when's the last time you, you talk good about the protocol stuff? When's the last time you smoked one of them? And I know well, we're live Ar- right now. I know this is pretty harsh. But yeah, like, I mean, the problem the problem is, is that, you know, Aaron has me smoking nothing but uh, new cigars, so I never get to enjoy myself anymore. Yeah. And that's right. I said it. Uh, no, I've got uh, I've got like a stack of protocol blues, uh, both in the Corona Gorda and the Lancero sitting on the top of my if I ever get to smoke good cigars again this is the cigars I'll choose from. And I think they're right. There's a, there's a, uh, there's a um, Jacob's ladder there. There's some um, Cro-Magnons. There's a couple Davidoffs. Uh, oh, we're talking about good cigars. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. No, I, I mean, I just, I smoke, I smoke nothing, but no, I seriously, I think they're, I think the core liners bangers. And, um, but I bet I, you are, I yeah. bet you, John, John, I, I know you as a smoker would definitely come to but like, Jim, man, come on. Yeah. Like when you had time to smoke something you want to smoke, you'd smoke it. Absolutely. I would smoke the Themis for breakfast. I would smoke the red, lot, the, yeah. the red for lunch. I love the Themis. And then I'd smoke the, the blue at night. What I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying June, if you had the opportunity, you ain't smoking this stuff and it's okay. If it was in my human, I wouldn't smoke it either. I'd be grabbing oh, something I, else to smoke. <laughs> Cause that's where we, that's where we go. Hey, yeah. Yeah. And I'll just say, uh, Get away from AJ, man. Go get, yeah. make them ramp up Lazona again and go there. I know that there's particular leaf, or whatever they don't have there that they can't get, but like you can get good, you can get better blends than this at Lazona, I would think. When they were when they didn't have access to these better tobaccos and they were just making stuff at Lazona, were they not getting better? Were they yeah. not getting higher scores? They were getting were they better not scores. getting better reviews. They were getting boy they were. better reviews. Yeah. Do they not get attention from Cigar Aficionado because of something out of their factory? Is CA even reverb, uh, reviewing protocol stuff? No, but they're reviewing Espinosa stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Just saying, though, go to the root. Right. I think CA throws Back a to bone basics. to warp. They're not, I don't think they're going any more boutique than that. Yeah. All right. If you just catch this video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us. Check out the full written review website on the website, developmentpals.com. Follow us on all the social media channels, and you can catch all of our review recaps on podcasts. So iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Legendary lawman, Bass Reeves.